And so, but when we stand for what is right, there's going to be opposition. And if we stand for what we really believe in, there are going to be those who oppose us. Even insurmountable opposition sometimes. It just seems like it can be so overwhelming in our lives when we stand for what we really believe. And so Jesus would say, look, I'm seeking, I'm not seeking glory for myself, but I am doing what I am supposed to do. I honor my father. And they, because he was honoring the father, they were coming against him. They were opposed to him. Expect challenge in your life. Expect opposition in your life. But don't let it stop you. The way that you handle the ridge is that you expect opposition, but you don't let it stop you. In Luke chapter 9, beginning with verse 51, as the time approached for him to be taken up to heaven, Jesus resolutely set out for Jerusalem. And he sent messengers on ahead, this was before the crucifixion, who went into a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. Jesus is moving towards Jerusalem now for the final few days of his life. He's moving towards, he's, he's taking that direction, he's traveling now towards Jerusalem. He sends some, some messengers, some disciples, or, or some, some of the people that were, were with him on ahead to make plans to get a place ready for them to stay, that sort of thing. They go to a Samaritan village to get things ready for him. But the people there did not welcome him because he was heading for Jerusalem. Now remember, the Samaritans believed that Shechem was the holy city, and the traditional Jews believed that Jerusalem was the holy city. And so you're going to Jerusalem, you're not one of us. We don't have anything to do with you. So the people did not welcome him because he was headed for Jerusalem. And what Jesus would have done, if I had been Jesus, what I would have just smacked him. You know, there would have been a little headbutting session going on right there. You know, who do you think you are? Do you not know who I am? You know, and so forth and so on. And there would have been, you know, I'd have called down fire. You know, I'd have blown them off the map. You know, I'd have just done something cool. And, uh, but instead what the passage says is, then he and his disciples went to another village. Oh, could have been so cool, God. You know, if you had done it my way, it would have been so cool. But no, you just went to another village. Sometimes that's how you deal with opposition in your life. You just go to another village. Sometimes you just go somewhere else. That's how you handle opposition. But the truth of the matter is, you are going to face opposition in your life. And those conflicts are going to reveal opposition in your life. Then, I think it's important for us to see the last point, which is the ridge becomes your place of ministry. The ridge becomes your place of ministry. When it says there in Luke that, uh, that the disciples went to another village, it didn't mean that they just kept on going and had nothing to do with that place anymore. They went to someplace else on the ridge is really what it, what it would say. They didn't go to Shechem. They went to another village in the area. They just found a place on the ridge. They found a different place. That was, that was where they were going to stay because that was the place that, that they needed to be. The ridge becomes a place of ministry for you. The opposition, the conflict in your life becomes a place of ministry. I want you to take a look at a passage in Acts. This is exactly what had happened when right after the, the church had, had formed and it was developing and the apostles were going out and they were ministering all, all through their area. Look where they really began ministering. Look at this in cha Acts chapter 8 beginning with verse 4. Those who had been scattered preached the word wherever they went. Philip went down to a city in Samaria, of all places. He went down to a city in Samaria and proclaimed the Christ there. When the crowds heard Philip and saw the miraculous signs he did, they all paid close attention to what he said. <coughs> then drop down to verse 14. When the apostles in Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. And when they arrived, they prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. Verse 25. When they had testified and proclaimed the word of the Lord, Peter and John returned to Jerusalem, preaching the gospel in many Samaritan villages. The ridge became their ministry. That which had been in opposition. Don't think that Peter and John and, and Philip and all these other guys who had been with Jesus didn't know the things that had gone on in Samaria. Don't think that they didn't think about the fact that they had been rejected in Samaria. I mean, just a, just a short time before with Jesus. They knew all of that. They knew what was going on in Samaria. 
They had been with Jesus in Samaria. They had been accepted and rejected by Samaria. They didn't let that earlier rejection of Jesus deter them from ministering there at all. The fact is that much of your personal ministry is going to take place on the ridges of your life. The conflicts that you face on a day-by-day -day basis become where you are to minister. They become the place that God gives you to minister. Remember that Jacob gave the ridge to Joseph. He gave him that area that was a difficult area, an area that he had to take uh, from the Amorites. It was an area of conflict, and he knew it was an area of conflict. And he also knew that the Amorites were still in the area. He knew that there would continually be conflict, and he gave that to Joseph, knowing that full well. Sometimes God allows those conflicts in your life, knowing full well that they're coming. And he knows that those ridges are going to face you, and you have to deal with those issues in your life. And there is going to be those times in your life when you, when you face that conflict that reveals your true character, and it reveals your true nature of humbleness or thanksgiving or arrogance. It reveals your true worship, and it reveals opposition in your life. But it also reveals your ministry, where you're to be, what you're to be up to. Uh, and you may not even know how at, the point, at that particular time or at that particular point. But it becomes very evident that God is saying, I've got you here now. I've got something I want to accomplish in and through, <coughs> in and through your life. Let's pray.